So for today's lecture, we're going to be focused on um, cell cycle and, um, and checkpoints and really coming back to the same concepts that we did in the previous lecture, which is that how do we make two new cells starting with one in, you know, um, mother starting cell. So as we mentioned before, there are trillions of cells in our body. Um, this, is, this process is something that is constantly happening and you really need to do with really high precision. And so I like this as a way of sort of combining the physical and the regulatory events. So we've spoken a lot in this class about signal transduction and regulatory control. And then last le lecture, we spoke a lot about the physical processes and players. How do you make DNA? How do you hold it together? How do you distribute it? And today we're going to combine those. So we're going to talk about the regulatory um, upstream pathways that define when and how you segregate your DNA, how you replicate your DNA, and sort of talk about how those two merge together. And so ultimately that regulatory unit is going to be, we're going to refer to as the cell cycle. And there's a specific um, signal transduction pathway um, that controls various aspects, of, various aspects of that that we'll call checkpoints. Today we'll begin by talking about the different cell cycle phases. Um, and then I'm um, talking about the different um, players that are involved in this. So we'll talk about uh, genetics that have were in, useful in model organisms, including um, budding and fission yeast to define key cell cycle regulatory mutants, mutants or CDC mutants. We'll talk about different ways that you can monitor the cell cycle. And then we'll talk about two very different but important themes for how you control the cell cycle. Regulatory kinases um, and their interplay with phosphatases. Um, and then um, the use of protein degradation and proteolytic cleavage to drive forward the cell cycle. And then we'll come back to these idea of the checkpoints of, of sort of how do you make sure that this is happening correctly. So when we think about this as a cycle, this really is something that's happening over and over again. So before, in the previous lecture, we diagrammed out the, these different physical events. Um, we had a growth phase, for example, uh, G1. We had a synthesis phase. Um, where we make new DNA called S phase. This is actually punctuated often in some cells by a second period of growth um, as after you uh, replicate the DNA. Um, and then you have to actually distribute the DNA during M phase. And then this process begins again. And this really is what underlies um, this cell cycle is that it's going to cycle. It's going to churn and it's going to keep going. And so we can make a new cell, two new cells, and each of those cells now is going to end up back at the beginning in what we'll refer to as this first growth phase. And when they're ready, they're triggered again. And so we can keep running around this cycle. And that is what ultimately allows us to generate uh, all of the cells within our body. Okay. So we talked about physically what's happening during there. And now we're seeing these events go through uh, t together. But let's actually think a little bit about the timing. So if we consider a 24-hour cell cycle, and this is what we would see for many of the human cells that are growing in culture. Um, you know, one of these cells is going to divide on average about every 24 hours. And so we can think about the distributions of these different events. So this growth phase, G1, typically is going to last about eight hours. This synthesis phase or S phase is going to last about 10 hours. And so you have a lot of DNA you have to copy. And um, during this phase, you've got to keep replicating and producing it. In a human cell growing in culture, it takes about 10 hours that you would see replication uh, continuing to occur. This G2 phase, um, so here we're going to add in DNA replication. This second growth phase can often occur um, uh, for about uh, five hours. <coughs> and then this M phase, mitosis, which seems like such a dramatic thing to be doing, is actually incredibly quick. And so it, it usually takes less than one hour. Okay? So the actual portion of time that a cell is going to spend dividing in mitosis um, in, in, of the entire cell cycle is, is actually quite low. Okay? So in this cell cycle, um, we see these different uh, distributions. And this is what I, again, would, would say is, is a, a human cell in, in culture. Um, this can vary dramatically, though. So, for example, budding yeast, which we're going to come back to um, quite a bit uh, today, um, it divides about every 90 minutes. And so all of these events have to be quicker in the context of budding yeast. And one of the things I find particularly um, remarkable is that, so for example, Drosophila embryos, when they are dividing rapidly early, you can have an entire division process happen in eight minutes. And this includes all of the DNA replication and all of the mitotic divisions. 
in the Drosophila embryo, you're not really having these growth phases because you're starting with a large egg that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you divide. And yet, these th events that can take an incredibly long period of time, they can be orchestrated and retuned so that they're happening incredibly rapidly. Even if you vary the times, though, you have this same cycle occurring. You need to be able to intersperse S phase and mitosis. You need to be able to, to drive it in this order and to be able to do it over and over again. And so I want to think today about you know, both how you achieve this and then also what is the logic of this.